good morning. I'll try to see if I can keep the Advent wreath in, in view. Um, and welcome to James with Jesus on this Wednesday, December 15th. Um, I had set up outside and then uh, the sanitation engineers came by with their big old truck. Two prayers I'd like to share. Uh, and I couldn't tell. My signal went out, which is surprising because I'm near the router in here, but hopefully this will come through. This prayer is from Morning Matins, and it's one of my favorite prayers. I, I quote it often in my annual reports because I think it, it holds true to what I have experienced and do experience. So let's begin with this prayer. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So yesterday was a rather full day um, for me. In the afternoon, I participated in a Clemson area pledge to end racism leadership team meeting. And uh, at, during that meeting, one of the spouses had shared that their, their spouse uh, and, and she have um, welcomed into their home uh, an interpreter that her husband had served with in Afghanistan when he was working in some agricultural projects. Um, and so, the whole notion of welcome, uh, you know, quickly resurfaced and everybody on the call from uh, said that if there's any things that we can do along the way to please keep us apprised of that. And they're going day by day working with uh, uh, World Relief, I think out of Greenville is the agency that's helping with, with this. So, um, and then just the whole Clemson area, Pledge to End Racism, how we work on anti-racism uh, to, to better pursue that vision of a beloved community. Then after dinner, I was participating in the South Carolina Native Plant Society, uh, kind of an annual review of the work that they've done. I've just recently joined them, so uh, so much is new to me, but they have a 25 year history and uh, they've participated in some very key projects here in the upstate to protect property where there's um, Literally, it's the only habitat for some plant species in the whole world, you know, right here in northern Greenville and Oconee counties. And so trying to recognize the demand for development, but also saying how might we pursue development that can be um, environmentally conscious to not eradicate a species from the face of the earth while still allowing the growth that is occurring uh, at this part in this part of the state. And then after that, I, I touched in very briefly with our Reconciling in Christ task force, and they had done some great work and come up with, I think about 15 or 20 ideas on how we can put this new welcome and affirmation statement that we approved on Sunday, how we can give that legs. What does that look like from some of the most basic things we talked about with uh, the name tags, just, just making ourselves available to better identify ourselves to, to a, a newcomer here in God's house, to uh, projects that have been bandied about for, for years and years, uh, and that one of them that popped out was the elevator. How are we truly welcoming to people who might not be as mobile uh, in a property that's divided between a lower level and an upper level with no connection other than getting in your car and physically driving around the block and hoping there's a parking place waiting for you at the other end. And I know that that's been discussed um, for the five years I've been here, and I believe it's been discussed for at least five to maybe 10 years or more before I got here. So I think that we are really hone in on that as part of this welcome and affirmation. How do we broaden um, our desire to be a house of God for all people and how we do that. And so that led me down a half a dozen. I woke up at three or four this morning and ideas would just start racing in my mind. And um, I tend to like to put those down on paper or start, a, start a accruing manila folders on possible ideas, knowing that, um, that I'll only involve, be involved in 
a little bit of each of these things, but hopefully with skills and talents and interests uh, that, I'm, that I believe I have or possess or would like to develop and invite everybody else to do likewise. And like I said, the Reconciling in Christ Task Force group already had you know, a lot, lots of good ideas. So I'm gonna close with a prayer I just dropped on the ground. And I've used this before also, maybe once or twice, because I think uh, it, it, again, articulates quite well this fantastic journey that we've been invited on following Jesus on the way, uh, not knowing for certain what comes ahead, just trusting that God is with us all along the way, and God certainly travels before us. So this is a prayer that often is attributed to Oscar Romero, but it truly, it was written by Bishop Ken Untener of Saginaw for a homily that Cardinal John Dearden um, used in 1979 at a celebration of um, priests who have died. So here's the prayer. It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which a way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything. And there's a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Amen. I hope you have a blessed day today. This evening at 7 p.m. we will have our final uh, Holden Evening Prayer at Midweek Advent Service, 7 p.m. and that'll be Facebook Live as well as here in person um, wearing our masks. And then next Tuesday, December 21st, we will be having our Blue Christmas Service, again, in person for those who'd like to be here and also uh, Facebook Live at, at 7 p.m. as well. And then our Christmas Eve services will be 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. in person, fully masked, so we can sing and gather around the altar rail and have candle lighting and Holy Communion. And our 7 p.m. service on Christmas Eve will be the one that we'll uh, show on Facebook Live. So God's peace be with you this day. Bye-bye.